We're here because I've been listening to the views of local residents. I've been doing an extensive survey. Uh, and we're here because people are telling me that one of the issues in this area is what happens to this site when the new school is built on the upper school site. Uh, the East Riding plan is saying there's going to be yet more development here. Uh, there is a view amongst local residents that there is an alternative to more housing. Three and a half thousand houses are being built in this town over the next 12 years. People feel lack of consultation on that one and mainly what they're saying here is we want to have a voice on what happens next here. Why does it have to be development? What about amenities and facilities for the community that is being served by the new houses that are being built? Um, people don't feel that they're being listened to. I want to give them a voice. I'm doing an extensive survey uh, and that's why we're here today really looking at this site. Okay and then I mean, ultimately, the, the the news that's been reported is saying that the schools receive funding from central government to build a new school. I suppose the big question is, and whether you know the answer to this or not, is do the school need to sell this site in order to, to, to build a new facility, or is this just offloading assets off the council's balance sheet in order to reduce costs? The funding is coming from central government to build the new school. Um, the council then have an opportunity to milk the land and sell it to a developer. That's what they're doing uh, with that very little consultation. And the point really is uh, that it's it, it, it's public it's, it's public area. It's a public it's a it's a school. It was a state school, um, and the people want to have a bit of a say in what goes on here. Uh, so the funding is coming from from government, but people are saying let's have a voice in actually what goes on with this site. Is, is, is what you're saying is that if all being well, that technically speaking, that the site at the moment with the redevelopment with the funding in place would mean that this actually this this particular project doesn't need to occur in in the in the in the demolition and yeah, redevelopment this area. site the, the funding for this school is secured um, so what happens to the development um, in, in, in the sense of the funding it doesn't affect it at all um, but obviously the council see it as an opportunity um, to develop the site okay but when you say develop the site, do you know how many houses they're looking at wanting to put on here at the moment? Um, I think there's about 50 houses. I need to check, check that. Okay, um, so you, I've, got, uh, I've, I've got that, I've got that figure. It's okay, in, it's in the leaflet. But there's there's so many different sites in Beverly where they're building where they're building houses, and there's quite a few uh, here on this uh, on this north side of Beverly. Okay, I mean the argument is obviously there's a shortage of housing. Make right? make no qualms mm. about it. We we mm. in Beverly we face mm. a. Mm. Uh, an, an overinflated price on mm. the value of property because mm. it's supply and demand and, mm. and the demand is f outstrips mm. the supply. Mm. So for those people who want to move to the town, maybe by building on these sites it gives them an opportunity to, to stay in their hometown. Would it, is it right to, to deny people that Absolutely. chance? Listen, I've got no problem in principle with, with new affordable homes. You know, we said that in government, we, we, we committed to 300,000 new homes. What we want, of course, is affordable homes. But they have to build them homes somewhere, Dennis. They have to build a home somewhere, and this is a, 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 a town with, with so much heritage and, and, and people do want to be here. Um, the issue is that it's happening without people really being aware of it. And people's concerns aren't so much the properties themselves that are going up. Um, it's more to do with what about the effects on schools, on doctor surgeries, um, those kinds of things. What about the effects on amenities and why are you not building the amenities to cope with the development? So it's not the developments that's the issue, it's, it's A the consultation, it's B the infrastructure, and it's C the, um, the, the, the amenities that go with it. These are the issues that people really have. Okay and if you've got a message right now for East Ryde and York's Council and, and the people behind this project, what would that be? Don't be complacent. Don't think that because you have a big majority on the council that you can take people for granted uh, and, and, and that people will put up with it whatever you do. And to quote them, whether people like it or not, unquote, that is their mantra. Whether people like it or not. That's not how it should work in a functioning democracy. How should it work? It should work by the people being listened to and consulted and having a view and a council having a certain amount of modesty into believing that actually when they do things they should do it uh, in a way that engages the people rather than despite what they think.